This is going to sound, sound redundant over the years uh, when we've done this interview, uh, but once again, based on the success of this conference uh, statewide, I'd put our conference up against any conference in the state. Uh, we've had so many state champions uh, in so many different sports. Um, I mean, look at ice hockey. All three divisions were won by one of our by schools from our, our league, and uh, it's just been a very successful conference. Um, we're still we're still changing. We're still growing. But it's just been a very successful conference. We're all proud of it. Now, since the league was implemented, you've had a couple of realignments. Um, but I would dare say this last one, probably the most drastic since the forming of the league, going from five general divisions to seven, and then sports-specific and other uh, football, field hockey, and the such. Just talk about the breakdown of uh, go the reasoning and the thought process from going from five to seven. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to speak for myself and, and the reasons I think this, these kind of things happened. Um, we're concerned about um, competition and, um, and strength of program. Uh, there is one conference out there, the uh, Essex Conference, uh, who does strength of program scheduling. We don't do that. We actually did it one in one sport as a pilot and boys lacrosse. Uh, and we're going to hopefully continue that. Um, but... We were thinking about ways that we could balance competition so there was not as many mismatches out there. Um, by going to smaller divisions, although there may be some mis mismatches in, within a small division, but you can go out and get independents and work with independents and crossovers to, to build your programs, to get competitive games. So if you're a, a team that's not so successful in a sport in a, within a division, you'll go out and you'll get independents that you can compete with. What that does is it makes your program more marketable at your student body level. Um, and so that's what we're hoping is going to be the result. There's been some resistance, obviously, winning a division with only five schools in it. Well, let's look at baseball. Let's look at football. I mean, they all do it. Um, so I never had a problem with that. I mean, a division championship is a division championship. You beat the teams in your division, and you win a championship. Um, but we think it's going to help with, with teams that are struggling and, and uh, with competition within the division. Now, will there be built-in crossovers? Because I know in this day and age, getting independence can be tough, and then they have the travel issue. So you'll have your built-in, say, uh, in the American division, Vernon, Sparta, Pope John, Mount Olive, and Morris Hills, you'd have your built-in eight league games play twice, correct? Yeah. And then you would, would you have mandatory crossovers to fill it out, and then you get independence? How's that going to work? Uh, I'm the chairman of the uh, scheduling committee, and that was the biggest challenge was the crossovers. Because, yeah, we built in crossovers because we wanted to give everybody 13, 14 games, uh, depending on the sport, obviously. Um, but I, I'm going to tell you how important this aspect of, of the schedule is. Vernon, for example, is opting out of all crossovers, which we allowed. So they're getting, they're filling their entire schedule, the AD is doing that, with independence. Um, now, if you're a powerhouse, it's going to be tough for you to get independence. Right. I agree with that. Um, that's basically why we have the crossovers. But they're mutually agree to drop. Um, so we're working with that, and uh, right now it's working well. It was a nightmare with the scheduling committee. It was really difficult, um, but we got through it, and we have some matrices now that we're using, and we think it'll work for the future. Because we, we obviously we're just going to repeat the schedule next year, just flip the homes in a way, and it shouldn't be much of a problem. Now, uh, some schools, Sussex Tech, uh, over the last the last two years, were in the independence for softball and baseball, and I believe in the in independent in football and some other sports. Are they going to be full fledged members now in all sports, or how does that work all with them? And football. and what about Morris Tech? Uh, Morris Tech is not in. Uh, they originally came in, um, and there were some stipulations in the bylaws that was going to make things difficult for them, especially playing in their tech league. Um, so they originally were going to come in, and then they decided not to come in. Sussex Tech came in in all sports but football. Um, they, too, um, I believe in some seasons, I'm not sure of every season, have opted out of independence so that they can play their tech schedule. Right. Um, so we're real happy about having them as well. And how big is it for the league for uh, an established good school like Morristown Beer to be back in? For football? For football. Uh, it was great. Um, and it just goes to show you that um, that decision that we allowed them to get out for a couple years, 
just like we did in the SEIL several years ago to let Wallkill out for a couple of years. It helped those programs. Um, Morristown Beard, in, in a very short time, we're, we're able to build that program up to now they're back in and they're competing. So um, I think that's a tribute to the executive committee and all the ADs of the conference to allow that to happen. We'll keep it the football note. You guys also realigned the divisions in football. Uh, just I, I know that had to be tough. Um, with you know with size disparity from schools, I know right here at Jefferson, you're one of the schools along with Morris Hills, and a couple other schools that always seem to be on the the line between playing the larger threes and fours or the twos. Just talk about that process and how you guys came to that final decision. That actually was done by a scheduling, not the scheduling committee. We actually had a football committee to work on that alignment, um, and they came up with it. Um, and again, nightmare as it as it pertained to the crossovers, nightmare. Um, and uh, some people, you know, had issues with that, but we're going to stick with the schedule as it was presented and approved. Um, but it was difficult because, again, it was about strength of program, trying to help schools out. Um, and we tried to help schools out. What we, what we did in a lot of these kind of schedules, you look at the PowerPoints over the years, and you try to schedule the crossovers based on PowerPoints. Um, for example, we opened up with Kinelon. Now, that's probably because two years ago, Kinelon won the States. Right. So they... You know, if you look at them, they're a lot smaller than us, but you look at the PowerPoints over the last couple of years, we're very close, you know. Um, that's going to be interesting for me personally because my son coaches at Kinelon. Oh, okay. So we open up with Kinelon, so uh, that, that'll be fun. But uh, I, I think the schedule works. Um, I think, uh, you know, as in everything we do, some people are happy, some are not. Um, but I think that the, allowing these independents and these crossovers and allowing yourselves to mutually agree not to play them um, gives you the flexibility to build your programs by the use of independence or rivalries that you might have that are out of the conference. Um, so that, that's a big thing for us. Now, I was looking at the schedule, and uh, week zero, Pope John's going to play DePaul in football, then Prams Catholic week one, and they opted out of their crossover with Del Barton. So that was allowed within the league, right? Yes, that was all done within the league. Because it seemed like over the last few years they would play Del Barton week nine, and then either play them the next week in states or the following week in states. So, okay. Well, there, Dan, it was interesting. And, again, people don't understand these kind of things, but there was a lot of talk about allowing schools to open up week zero. Because um, if I open up week zero, and it, that's my first game, and there's a lot of change that occurs on a football team between week z first game to second game. You make a lot of adjustments. Well, if you're open up week one and I'm open up week zero, I have a distinct advantage. I got a game under my belt already. Right. Um, so that was a big talk uh, conversation that we had um, in the conference. But we, because of the personal, not personal, but the unique situation with Pope John and playing independence, it worked out. And you touched upon it before, uh, the strength of schedule with boys lacrosse. Uh, personally, I thought it was a great success. The, the leagues were very competitive. Uh, your thoughts on how that shook out? Because I know you did it with the girls a few years back, and it was kind of, you know, it didn't wasn't as smooth as maybe the boys were this year. Yeah. That's my opinion. But uh, just talk about how the lacrosse worked because obviously lacrosse in this area is the best in state. Yeah, we, um, yeah we're going to continue it again. Um, we just approved those schedules in June. Um, there are some people, uh, some schools that are opposed to the schedule, um, and we're probably going to bring it up for a discussion again in August uh, because originally it was done on strength of program and using PowerPoints, but over a four-year period. This new schedule, uh, two-year cycle, is using PowerPoints over a two-year period. Um, and you'd be surprised how things change, sure. especially in a sport like lacrosse. Um, you know, a team, you know, look at Mount Olive, the success they had. Um, and I don't want to say it's fleeting, but they had a tremendous year because they had a tremendous class. Right. Um, and now they're sort of coming back to the pack a little bit. So schools have uh, issues with that. Um, um, but I, I think it's been a great success. Uh, once again, it's strength of program. Um, you know, the guys in the conference know that I'm a strength of program guy. I, I think it's, an, it's good. It's healthy for, a, for schools to be strength of program scheduled because you're competing with like schools and you don't have so many blowouts. Um, it's demoralizing when you walk on a field and before you even have the kickoff or start the game, you know you're going to lose. And that's what strength of program does away with. But we're just doing it with lacrosse. That's the only sport. Um, we try, like you say, we tried it with girls, and there 
there's such a disparity yes. between a, a couple schools. Um, in lacrosse, we have more schools that are real good. Right. Um, and then we have that middle group and we have that, that, that uh, developmental group, I'll call them. Um, and it works. There's more of a balance uh, in boys lacrosse. And it works with the, with the NJILL schedule, too. So it was very successful, I think. Is there any talk or maybe a committee to study maybe going to strength the schedule like Essex County? No, I, I think a lot of people aren't in favor of it. I don't think it will ever pass here. Do you, um, you can think of any reason why? Uh, because this, because one of the ne the negatives about strength of program, uh, we've always been an issue. We have an issue with geography. Right. So you know, if schools are spread out, the power schools, if you will, are spread out across the two counties, three counties if you count, you know, Warren. Um, there's a lot of travel involved, right. and it's always been an issue with our conference about geography and travel. So for that reason, I don't think it'll pass. Um, the other negative thing that people look at is that you're banging your heads against studs, you know, every week, every game. You know, my feeling is that prepares you for the states. Right. My feeling is they, they seed the states now based on PowerPoints. Right. So even if you are below 500, you still get in. you're still going to get in, and you're still going to get in and probably get a good seed if you really have those kind of PowerPoints. So uh, I'm not too sure I, I uh, agree with the naysayers. Um, but I understand their position. Hey, if you look at softball, you know how great softball was this year. Sparta has a 12 seed in North 1 Group 3, won a couple games before losing to the best team in the state, Indian Hills. Look at Mount Olive in baseball. Absolutely. Unbelievable what a run they had. Roxbury, too, had a great run. Absolutely. So, so uh, where do you see the, the future of the league? I know, and I don't know if people ask you, but people do ask me all the time, will the SEIL ever come back? And I think a lot of that's fueled by the declining enrollment in schools like Vernon and the such that they think maybe, you know, that was one of the big reasons people wanted re realignment because the disparity of the uh, uh, size of the schools. But with Vernon basically right now maybe on track to becoming a two within three years or so, it, would there be any, not exactly the SEIL because I think that's gone forever, but any chance of the Sussex and you guys, you know, uh, being together in one conference? Uh, one division, I should say. You know, Dan, it's a good question because, uh, you know, I, I feel, first of all, uh, I, I love the new conference. It's great for Jefferson. I, I love it. Um, but first of all, it, the state would have to be involved, right. number one, for that to happen. There would have to be another state realignment. So I don't think that's going to happen uh, at this point in time. Uh, we accommodate schools that drop enrollment. You know, look at High Point. Right. High Point moved this year. Um, so I, I don't think that's the issue. Um, you know, geography will still always be an issue. You can't move the building. Uh, yeah, you can't move the building. Um, but you know, you got to realize this conference has only been five years. We're going into our sixth year. Right. We're still in the infancy stage. We've had in five years three major changes. You know, if you look at the, the bigger schools, we had all the schools in one division. 15 schools in one division the first year. Then last year we went to seven or eight teams in the, in the division, um, and it was spread out a little bit more. This year, the new two-year cycle, it's another change. Um, you know, we still are in our infancy stage, and I wouldn't be surprised if this changes. People look and say, there's only five schools, and if they vote and they go back to bigger conferences, divisions again, that's what we'll end up doing. But uh, it's, it's a process, and uh, I don't think the SEIL will come back. Yeah, I agree. And, and people might not know, the SEIL master plan when it was first formed was they had the original 10 teams, and then Sparta came in. They wanted to expand to at least 20. Yeah. That was part of their plan. People re really don't know that because they say, oh, it's a nice confined league. But they had aspirations of getting bigger. And then I believe in 82, when the fir one of the first big realignments came through when Jefferson joined the SEIL and Sussex Tech left. So people don't realize it's always an ever-evolving process. One of the other things that I think is uh, positive, um, when we formed the NJAC, there was a lot of animosity. Uh, Morris County, Sussex County, and um, we, uh, the Sussex County schools wanted to develop the NJAC championships right. in all the sports. Um, but Morris County wanted to maintain the tradition and the rivalries of the Morris County tournaments. And the HWS, the Hunter and Warren Sussex tournament, was born out of that. Um, and I think that's been very successful for those schools. Um, and I think that's better than the SEIL tournament was. I mean, the SEIL tournament, you were banging your heads 
all season long, and then you had to play the same schools again in the championship tournament. Now, at least, there's other schools involved. Right. And that was always the beauty of the Morris County tournament. You had the Iron Hills Conference, you had the Skylands, all those different schools forming Morris County tournaments. That's the beauty of county tournaments, or the HWS in this case.